Hi, I'm Diniti Rajapaksha from the Australian National University. Welcome to the tutorial on sequence mapping. Sequence mapping involves locating the position of sequence reads within a reference genome using both sequence data and related information. For today's tutorial, I'll be using the usegalaxy.au server. So first we will create a new history in the history panel. Create new history. And then let's rename the history. I'll rename mine as sequence mapping. All right, now we need data. So data for today's tutorial will be from Senado. And links for the data set are given here in the tutorial. All you have to do is copy the two links. And then using the upload option, select paste fetch data. And then paste the two links you copied from the tutorial and hit start. Once it reaches 100%, we can close this window. And now you can see the two data sets are here in the history panel. They are still loading. Once they turn into green, we are good to go. All right, now the data sets are loaded. Let's look at that. And here, if you can see, it's 2.7 megabytes, which is quite small compared to the actual data set that you will be working with. But for sake of time, the data sets are downsized. Now, before starting the analysis, let's rename the data sets because you can see the names are quite long. And as suggested in the tutorial, we will rename them as reads one and reads two. You're using this edit attributes. Simply type as reads one and save it. And we can see it's now the name is changed. We'll do the same with the data set two. Reads two. Okay, now the data is ready. Ideally, the next step is to do the quality control, the trimming. But here in this data set, they are pre-processed. But if you want to learn more about quality control, please refer the quality control tutorial in Galaxy. As I mentioned earlier, sequence mapping involves locating the position of sequence reads within a reference genome. So what is a reference genome? A reference genome is a set of DNA sequences that represent the genetic material of a species. It's not from just one individual, but a combination of sequence from several individuals. So it gives an overall picture of the species genome. You may have seen that there are different reference genomes for the same organism, for example, HG19 and HG38 for humans. These different reference genomes are updated versions of the genome for that particular species. As DNA sequencing technology improves and more data is collected, scientists build new versions, or we call them builds, of the reference genome. Each new build will gaps, correct errors, and gives us a more accurate picture of the genome. Since the data we are using today comes from chipsick of mice, we'll be using the MM10 reference genome. Please remember different species and experiments will require different reference genomes. So when you're using this workflow for future analysis, you can select the appropriate reference genome based on your experiment. And for the analysis, there are several tools you can use for mapping. But today we are going to work with Bowtie 2. So let's find Bowtie 2 in the tool panel. And when you select the tool, you can see the tool interface, it loads in the main panel. So here in the tutorial, we can see the Galaxy version to be used. It's Galaxy version 2.4.2 2 Galaxy Zero. I'll be using the exact version of Galaxy to keep it consistent. So 
So it asks that is this is the data single or paired in? So we should select paired in because this is paired in data. We have reads one and reads two. Then we should select reads one here and reads two here. It says to, do you want to set paired in options? We have to select no according to the tutorial that is to keep the default options, but let's look at the options we are having. Yeah, they are asking for the minimum fragment length and the maximum fragment length. So giving the minimum and uh, maximum fragment length will guide the mapper in the mapping process and here it's about the orientation that is we have two reads as reads one and reads two so it's like specifying which which of these reads are the forward reads and which are the reverse reads you'll be knowing that information from the library preparation steps but for now we will be keeping the default settings so we'll select no mentioned in the tutorial and this is the important part selecting the reference genome so we will be using the mouse genome so it is mm10 mm10 reference genome this mouse genome is quite common therefore in galaxy you have well, in build genome, but if you're working with less common species, it might not be in the in build genome. So what you should do is upload your genome to the history panel and then select use a genome from the history and build index option and then select your genome, the data set from here as the reference genome. And they're asking about the read groups information. This is important if you're working with multiple data sets, but that's not the case here. So we are not going to set it. Um, this one, mapping statistics. Yes, we need the mapping statistics. So I'm going to set it to yes. And let's execute now. This might take a bit of time. So feel free to take a little break, but in this case, it won't take that much of time because we have downsized the data set. All right, it's done. So this process results in two output files, the mapping stats and the alignments. First, let's look at the mapping stats file using the display option. So these are the mapping stats related to the mapping. So it says that there were 50,000 reads and from that 50,000 reads all were paired. And from that 44,731, that is around 90% of the reads aligned exactly one time with the reference genome, which is good. And then here it says 3,389 reads. That's around 7% of reads. They align more than one times. This is mainly because of the repetitive regions in the reference genome. So when the sequence reads are short, they align more than once to those repetitive regions in the reference genome. And 1,880 sequencing reads have not been mapped to the reference genome at all. This is mainly because of the divergence between the reference genome and the sequencing reads due to the mutations and also sequencing uh, errors can also be a reason for this not mapping to the reference genome so that's about the mapping stats let's move to the alignment file so in the alignment file there are two main sections if you see clearly here all these lines starting with the at side they are the header lines. And after that, we have the alignments. After this, lines with the lines starting with app, we have the alignments. In these header lines, 
There are different types. So at HD, at SQ, and here if you say at PQ, PG, they are given different kinds of information related to this mapping. So basically if we look at this at SQ header lines, they are giving information related to the uh, chromosomes or the contigs in the reference genome, like contig or the chromosome name and the respective length. So those are the header lines. And from here, it starts the alignments. That section has several columns. In the first column, we have the query name, the sequence read name. And this is the bitwise flag, the second column. And the third column, it is a chromosome or the contig where this particular read maps into. And this is the position of that chromosome or the contig. And here we have the mapping quality. And then the SIGA value. This one, the first value, 51M means 51 matches. SIGA, it gives you an idea about the matches and mismatches. So in the second case, it says there's 21 matches and then one mismatch, that is one insertion, and 20, again 21 matches. The next one, this column, it is the chromosome or the contig to which the pair, the pair maps, pair of this read. And this is the position, same as this, the position to which the pair mapped. If the pair read map to the mm, same chromosome or the contig where the first read map, there will be an equal sign in this column. If that's not the case, like in the first column, they will specify to which chromosome or the contig the pair map. So in this case, the first read, it has mapped to the first chromosome but the pair of it has mapped to the chromosome 10. But in the second line, it says this particular read has mapped to chromosome 1, and also the pair of that read has mapped to the chromosome 1 as well. Then here we have the insertion size, the size of the insert. And the next is the query sequence, the actual sequence. And then this is the quality of the query sequence and other optional information are there. Please do that usually the BAM files are compressed files, but Galaxy, they, they allow us to display it in a human readable manner in this case. So uh, this BAM files provide the row alignment data. If you want to visualize this alignment, we need to use a special purpose alignment weaver. One such weaver is IGV, the Integrative Genomics Weaver. To visualize alignments using IGV, you'll first need to install it on your computer. So this is IGV, the Integrative Genomics Weaver. This is how it works. In the alignments file, go to the visualize option and you will be given with this options and we are going to select display with IGV. And now the data is loaded from the galaxy to the IGV. And at the moment we cannot see any reads because the reads are like dispersed in the genome and we are having only 50,000 reads. So let's zoom into a position. Here in the alignment file, So here this read maps to this particular position. So we'll select that. That's in chromosome one. Chromosome one. And we need a range. So we will just change this number so we can get a range. Here you can see the 
mapping of that particular read to the reference genome. This read seems not interesting, so let's get an interesting read. This one, because it says that there is an insertion. We'll select the position, same as the previous time. Chromosome 1, we will paste the position. And then change it a bit so that we can get a range. Okay, so here you can see the read. It is mapped to this reference genome in this position. And this is the eye which was showing in that Ziga format, the insertion. So now let's go back to the tutorial. There they suggest looking into this region in chromosome 2. Let's zoom in. Okay, you can see that there are a number of reads aligning to the reference genomes and in this particular position. So also this graph in the top, it shows the depth of coverage. It's not that meaningful if we interpret the depth of coverage in this scenario because we were using a downside sample, but it is really important when you're dealing with an actual sample, check the depth of coverage because higher the depth of coverage, had the confidence. So this reads, if you click on each of these reads, you can get information about the reads, the read name, the read lens, the SIGA values and everything. And this section, this region, it seems interesting. Let's zoom into that region. Now you can see there is a mutation here. In the reference sequence, it's a T here, that is a thymine. But here in our reads, in the majority of the reads, we are having a C, a cytosine. So that means there's a mutation in this position. So like that, you can get information regarding the mapping from this alignment weaver. Also, there are many options provided by IGV. For example, you can change the color coding of these reads. Like if you go to color alignment, we can color code them according to the strand, forward and the reverse strand, like this. So there are several options, so you can try them and see. So for now, we'll keep the default option. So another option to view the alignments is the JBrowse tool. With JBrowse, there's no additional installations required since it is there in the galaxy itself. So let's find the JBrowse. So you should select JBrowse Genome Browser. And here it is. So in the tutorial, you're given with all the Options you should be selecting, so we will do it accordingly. We are using a built-in genome, and here it should be MM10. If you are using a custom genome or a genome that you have updated, like uploaded, you should select genome from history and then select that particular genome. And then we need a new JBrowse instance, and I'm going to add a track group. There I'll be adding an annotation track. From here, I'll be selecting BAM pileups. And I need an auto generated. Is that be tracked, so I'm going to set it to yes. 
And then the track visibility should be on for new users. And then we can execute. When using JBrowse, keep in mind that it might take a little while to finish running. Sometimes there can be server issues or delays, so don't worry, give it a bit of time to complete. It took about 10 minutes for JBrowse to finish running. Now let's take a look at the results. So I'll increase the screen size so that we can see better. And here you can see that there are two tracks enabled alignment and the snip coverage. By any chance, if that's not enabled for you, simply click on them and enable the two tracks, the alignment and the snips. So let's zoom on to the same region we did in IGV, which is given in the tutorial. But you have to be mindful when setting the coordinates because it's not the same way you set the coordinates in JBrowse. Here in IGV, the start code or uh, the start coordinate and the hyphen and the end coordinate. And you can find commas in between. But here in JBrowse, you have the start coordinate without commas and two dots and the end coordinate. So let's select chromosome two because that is the chromosome we are interested in. This is the start coordinate. We'll copy that. And delete the commas. And the end coordinate now. No commas. Okay. Right. This region looks should look familiar as it's the same one we explored in IGV. So here you can see the depth of coverage. And Zebras also highlights the positions where it suggests potential SNPs are. However, keep in mind that this is just an approximation. With alignment waivers like Zebras, IGV, are designed to be SNP variant, SNPs or variant callers. So accurate SNP or variant calling requires extra steps beyond visualization. So hope you all can remember that those different color schemes we discussed in IGV. So one of those color schemes are used here. This is colored according to the strand, the forward and the reverse. So it's pretty much similar to the IGV result. So that brings us to the end of the tutorial. I hope you found the sequence mapping process interesting and feel more familiar with the tools we have used today. Thank you for joining and good luck with your future analysis.